Alrighty, I think we're live. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you for joining me today. And for everyone who's watching, um, we are having a creative conversation with Devin Graham. Um, and Devin is the um, Fine Arts Coordinator of the Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center. Um, so I'm going to let her tell us all about that and then all of the other extraordinary things she does. Um, but first, what, let's talk about your background, kind of how you came to be where you are now. Um, so what is your creative and or professional background, like any schooling or previous jobs that kind of led you to where you are now? Anything like that? Yeah. So first, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm, sure. I'm happy to um, hang out for this next little bit. Um, so I actually started, um, I gained interest in art history um, when I was in high school. Uh, I had a teacher, uh, a couple of teachers, uh, Mrs. Waldorf and uh, Mr. Kroger, um, who were kind enough to take students to Europe um, over the summertime. And I got to go a couple of different times and that was what initially exposed me to art history. And I fell in love with it. I already had a love and then that just kind of solidified everything. Uh, Picasso's Guernica was awe-inspiring in person and that was really what sealed the deal. So I went to the University of Missouri, Kansas City, UMKC um, in Kansas City and studied art history where I got my bachelor's degree. And um, while I was working on my undergrad, I actually started working at the Kemper Museum in Kansas City. And it was kind of an evolution with them. It's a really lovely place. And I, I'm proud to say that I'm still connected with them in a, in a positive way and continue to teach classes with them now. Um, but I started on a, as a contractual teaching artist, which evolved to volunteering sometimes and then teaching more and more until um, a couple years later, I uh, stepped in as the museum educator when my mentor, uh, Brenda, she was the former museum educator at the time, had, had left. And um, it was actually part-time at that point in time. And so I got to oversee arts programs for both the main Kemper Museum and at the time they still had their Crossroads location. And so I did that for a while until it became full-time, continued to do that for a while. Um, and then that eventually, led to my position with JCPRD, which I stumbled upon, um, honestly, not really realizing the full capacity of what it was. And I was thrilled when I came to find out that the Arts and Heritage Center was something at that point in time that was in the process of being created. So I am happy and thrilled to say that I got to be a part of those conversations that were taking place about what, what's this building going to be and what are we going to do with it? And I got to um, start the fine arts program there from, from scratch because of that. Um, and then as far as my background goes, um, I have continued to work toward a couple of different master's programs that are still in progress. So I've got two different um, masters right now that I'm working on. One is through Park University in communication and leadership. And another one is in museum studies through Harvard University's extension program. And both wonderful programs, both a work in progress when you're working so diligently at other things. Um, and then professionally speaking um, and personally speaking, I am also a working artist. I make primarily pieces that are mixed media. It admittedly has been a moment since I have made anything, but uh, I've, I've had some successes with that, which has been an enjoyable way for me to, to process anything that's happening in my life at that any given moment. And then I also have served on a couple of different boards. Um, initially, I served for a while on uh, Zeke Crozier's handicapping board. And then um, I am back on the state board for the Kansas Art Education Association. And I'm also involved in the um, Museum Association for the East Coast, which is kind of a fun, wow. <laughs> random thing um, as part of my master's program. So, cool. so yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like yeah. a weird random fact. Like I oh, didn't yeah. know that. So that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and just a fun fact for anybody who's watching. Um, I actually worked for Devin. I still do technically. <laughs> so I work, for, yeah. <laughs> I work for the arts council as a part-time administrative assistant, 
but I'm also a teaching artist at the Arts and Heritage Center. So um, pre-COVID, do you want to talk a little bit about the arts program? Um, kind of what classes and camps you guys did, um, like the role of a teaching artist, that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first of all, I miss you terribly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm very thrilled for everything you're doing with the Arts Council. And I'm thankful that we get to keep working and connecting um, in these other unusual ways, which is wonderful. <laughs> um, so our, our programs, there is kind of a pre-COVID, post-COVID, uh, not quite post, but yeah. during COVID yeah. um, viewpoint on our programs right now. So we have a broad spectrum. So what falls under my role as far as programs go is preschool youth and adult visual arts education and within those scopes it goes across mediums so painting drawing mixed media ceramics um really anything visual arts that you can think of and and imagine we we can do it and do do it um and that can range from classes that meet once a week regularly and one-time workshops um we do a lot of private workshops a lot of birthday parties girl scout we have a really awesome badge um it's super <laughs> um, cool. It's super cool. Um, I, in fact, I think I have one around here somewhere. I'll have to pull it out. <laughs> Imagine rainbow tie dye. That's all you need to know. <laughs> yes, yes, which you know, if you're doing the arts, that's everything you want is all the colors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, anyway, we do special events and things like that. Really amazing Girl Scouts program that we've kind of um, dove into, and a massive amount of camps. So, all of this to say is that the visual arts side of stuff that I oversee is really from age zero to 99 and beyond. Um, and it's also at multiple locations. So I have programs, fine arts has programs over at the arts and heritage center, which is kind of our home base. We also do programs out of the Roland park community center, mill Creek activity center, uh, sometimes new century field house and more recently have been doing them in partnership with the city of Prairie village out of their community center. Um, and so it's a broad, it's a broad, uh, range. And then I always like to sprinkle in that. We also do a lot of private workshops that are outdoors at our parks. So we've done those at heritage park and Antioch park and Shawnee mission. And, um, you know, which is a really wonderful thing to be able to incorporate the parks for Johnson County park and rec. Um, because they're such beautiful spaces and it's just when there's good weather and um, hopefully we'll get to do that more in the coming months. It's just a really great opportunity to do things. So, um, but also within those programs, we have a really massive homeschool um, program that is near and dear to my heart and the amazing uh, Miss Marcy and you, of course, <laughs> Allison's been kindly, kindly involved in that program as well. And um, so we, at the Arts and Heritage Center have uh, regular classes that meet once a week and they go by levels. There's level one, level two, level three, and hopefully beyond that as our students continue to grow. And they meet once a week to learn from an, through an art, art history lens um, about an artist and then create their own work inspired by that artist. And it's all to both fulfill both Kansas and Missouri state standards, which is really awesome, but also to kind of get that socializing piece um, which is so important. And so it's, it's a really beautiful program that has built quite the following as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an awesome program and Marcy's the best. So <laughs> yeah, we're very lucky. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I love helping out with homeschool. I think there are such great kids and the program is awesome. So um, let's see, what else is part of your role? Um, not only programming, but I mean, is there anything like admin or you know other stuff like that that you just yes. all that <laughs> <laughs> yes so there is so so my position predominantly is that um arts education programming side of things but there's also this like whole other side of my my role that um involves so i i curate the arts exhibitions at the arts and heritage center and we rotate those about um, five times a year, give or take a little bit. Um, it has slowed down because of COVID, um, which I think is kind of a beautiful thing in a lot of ways. And so those arts exhibitions all feature mostly local artists um, who are from the area. Um, and I can dive into more detail with that a little bit later, but um, that's a big, big part of my job. 
another big part of my job is grant writing. And so um, I'm frequently seeking out grants to apply to. And, you know, that's that's my role within the grant writing is designing the narrative for the, the project, as well as the project budget and um, usually the, the project director for whatever that grant is tied to. So right now, a big one is our veterans program. Um, we're preparing to open our veterans exhibition called Place of Peace um, here within the next week. I believe it's set to open February 12th um, at this point. And so um, it is supported by the National Endowment for the Arts and Mazuma Foundation, which we are so very grateful for. Um, and so part of my process and my role with all that was applying for those grants and partnering with the Arts Council of Johnson County on that, pro on that project and then continuing to expand companion programs that are specific to those exhibitions. So we've got our regular classes and in, in the arts education side of things, but then we also have the programs that dive into how the arts connect with mental health. How do the arts connect with, with veterans and bridging the gap from, from military life to civilian life? How do we help, um, help our community better understand what that process is like so that we can be more supportive in ways that, you know, in other ways. And so um, there's many facets to my job. I also um, help manage our website and social media and things like that too. So, and budgets, <laughs> so all the things. Fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> many hats. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, let's go into more uh, detail about the exhibitions. Um, so you talked a little bit about Place of Peace. Do you wanna talk about, um, the, the one that just came down and all of the programming factors that are still going on with that one? Yes, so we, I am so proud, sh shamelessly proud of that exhibition because <laughs> we, we, we just, we just com closed, um, which was a little heartbreaking, our uh, resilience, reflection, rebuilding, artists respond to COVID-19. We put a call out back in, I think, July. And when I say we, it was the Arts and Heritage Center and, and JCPRD managed by the Arts and Heritage Center, the Arts Council of Johnson County and the Johnson County Museum all partnered, which was a really unique, beautiful partnership. Um, and we partnered, put out a call for entry, asking artists to submit work who had created work as a response to everything that has gone on with this pandemic um, and the results of this pandemic, which, it gives me chills just talking about this because we received, I think, I want to say we ended up with, I want to say 65 artists and 90 some odd pieces in the show, which were everything from drawing, painting, sculpture, uh, quilts. Um, I mean, it was just everything. And it was really fascinating to watch this show, which I am particularly partial to, which there is still the exhibition catalog is still online, um, www.jocoahc.com. And you can kind of navigate to find it. I don't know the main link off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> but um, this show, even though when we installed it, it was a very, and still is in a lot of ways, a very dark situation that people were responding to. The show itself is full of uniquely bright pieces and just the artist statements that are in that exhibition catalog um, and, and the ways people are coping with things right now and and the different layers to everything that's going on. It, it's just, it's a breathtaking show. Um, but we were um, thankful that it, it received quite a bit of positive feedback. And we have been able to continue to partner with the Arts Council on creating these magnificent, beautiful art kits um, that, uh, that Allison has been so kind to really kind of spearhead um, that are free to the public. Uh, they're in these wonderful little bags that have just some art materials and, some, and, and uh, they feature one particular work of art from the show along with some prompt questions that we have partnered with the Johnson County Mental Health Department to design so that um, individuals can consider those questions, families can use those questions to talk about things um, because this is hard to talk about. This is hard to process in a lot of ways in various ways for different people. Um, and then people who take those kits can also use the materials to create work that's inspired by the work. Um, I believe this week's feature is the impulse. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yep. Um, 
by Smith of George, which is actually the piece that was the People's Choice selected piece to become part of the museum, the Johnson County Museum's permanent collection, which is really cool. Um, and they know that I am still bitter about that because I was going to buy that piece <laughs> and <laughs> they got it. So it's fine. <laughs> um, but um, I really am thrilled for Smitha and, and that honor to become a permanent collection piece um, so that our community can continue to enjoy it because that's way more, way more important than it being in my house somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's it that show was deeply meaningful. Um, it makes me get kind of emotional just because I think people needed that sense of community, and I think that they still do. And I think those art kits are still available even though the show is down. And so I encourage I encourage um, anyone and everyone to to come to the Arts and Heritage Center and and pick one up because they really it really is just a wonderful thing to to use right now. Yeah, and they're right at the front door, so you don't have to navigate far into the building to get one. Um, so, you know, come in with your mask on and then grab one and go, and you don't have to worry too much about, you know, social distancing or anything like that. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been beautifully done. And what's cool, though, and I'm just going to put this out there, is we are continuing to develop more art kits. Um, that will be in line with the Place of Peace ex exhibition, which is installing as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's going to hopefully become an ongoing thing that we're able to to offer our, our community because it's just really cool. It's cool to have a resource for talking and discussing and, and how to talk about art and how to talk about what art means and how that applies to mental health and then actually creating it. It's just a really, really cool thing. And it's free. So <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> um, so another program piece that was with that exhibition was the Apocalypse Now question mark. You want to talk yeah. about that? Yeah. Yes. Thank Go you for, for saying that. Um, I am in the so in the here and now that I'm forgetting what um, has taken place recently. <laughs> um, so uh, we hosted a um, panel discussion called Apocalypse Now. Um, on January 12th mm -hmm. um, and I, I had the opportunity to moderate it which was lovely and it was we featured um, a number of um, community members uh, Craig Workman, um, Arzi Umali and Camille um, I'm blanking on Camille's last name um, <laughs> and I apologize um, and Smitha George the artist who was selected mm -hmm. for the museum um, but all discussing whether we are in an apocalypse right now and the term apocalypse by definition means permanent change so as a result of a global event like this and so it was it was a really interesting discussion thinking about what changes have taken place what changes might take place and then of course the other layer to this both with that um, event and the art kits and the resilience reflection rebuilding show is that all of it, while the, while the initial premise of it was COVID-19, all of it dove into all the, all the racial issues right now and um, you know, human to human justice and, and what all of these things mean and what the impact of all of this has been. Um, and again, thinking about permanent change and you know, how many of these things should have changed a long time ago and hopefully there this will be catalyst enough that so things do change so it was all very very interesting and very important topics to discuss mm -hmm. and i think that that um panel discussion is still online correct? yeah so i'm pretty sure it's on the arts and heritage facebook page it's on our facebook page and it's also on our youtube channel um, yeah. so you can go back and watch it on any of those platforms um it was about an hour Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I highly recommend it's, people watch it. I mean, it's, it's so, yeah, informative and interesting. Um, they yeah. tied back to World War One artwork, um, pre-war art, um, literature. It was just, it was super interesting. So I felt like we could have talked for hours. <laughs> to be honest. I can listen to you for hours. We yeah. tapped into an hour. <laughs> yeah. We tapped into an hour. But, you know, if anyone does watch it, I would love to hear from people. And I'm sure you guys would too. Just you know, people's thoughts on it and, and how, cause those conversations, I mean, that's everything that we do in the arts is having those conversations, whether it be through art 
right. or art sparking the conversation or creative conversations um that that that's just so important right yeah yeah making the art and seeing the art is step one and then step two is reacting to it so yeah yeah definitely so yes Good. check that out um check out the ex exhibition catalog um and then um so the next one that's coming up is Place of Peace, which you already kind of talked about. Um, can you talk about what's coming up after that? Is there anything scheduled after that? Yes. So the goal at any given moment is to be scheduled two to three years out. Mm -hmm. So um, I always say that, make a point to say that because I'm frequently reached out to by members of our community who are interested in a show. And um, I always add them to my pool, but we are usually two to three years out. So I always try to make sure people are aware of that. Um, that if we're having conversations, we're probably looking at 2024 at this point. Um, and so after the Place of Peace exhibition, which is a veterans exhibition, um, particularly highlighting um, them as artists more so than, than their role as veterans, but honoring, honoring that transition is um, the county exhibition, which is um, all county employees, and that'll be up from, and benefits Arts Casey, and that'll be up um, August and September. And then following that is a solo exhibition by Brittany, or Brittany Noriega, who is, oh, it's just, it's gonna be so cool. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I cannot wait. It's just gonna be amazing, but it's, you know, it's new growth and it's, um, predominantly black and white mm -hmm. um which I think I think we have such a colorful space mm -hmm. and we have mostly done really colorful shows but I am so excited to challenge that that notion right now just because we've always done colorful shows with some really beautiful works that are are in black and white for the most part and so um it her show will be up um, we'll install late September, early October, and it'll be up through January, 2022. Mm -hmm. And I highly encourage everyone to, to check out this artist when she's on view. And, um, if you haven't already try to find her in other capacities through Facebook and, and other accounts, because she's incredible. And I'm just so honored that we get to, to be the ones to, to show her work in this capacity. So I think it's gonna be really great. Yeah. It's, I've been following her um for a while now and it's she's been showing sneak peeks of what she's been working on for that show and they are so detailed and so gorgeous and huge I think she's working on like an eight foot one right now seven or eight feet like that is drawings like that's that's insane <laughs> yes yes well and I mean, it just, it's going to be so cool. And I am not going to say what it is because I don't want to divulge the surprise, but there will be some site specific installation components to her show. And that to me is what like, like that to me should always be the standard for a show. I am so partial to site specific installs that, um, cause it just adds a layer of connection and, um, depth to the show that I don't think is is there with traditional shows mm -hmm. and so um I'm very excited for that piece too it'll be good awesome. yeah love it yeah um okay so I have a question for you um yeah. before resilience reflect reflection rebuilding do you have a favorite exhibition that you curated any, oh. anything before that one, because I know that one is like a high standard for you. So I'm going to make you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that, okay. That is such a challenging question. And I will tell you, I have been thinking about this like nonstop because, um, it's just really true, truly and genuinely so hard to choose. Um, I have at the arts and heritage center, I would say we have had about, I want to say like 15 shows, 12 to 15, something around that mm -hmm. to date. And those last anywhere from a month. We've even had a two week show. Um, oh, yeah, all the way to um, six months. So I am, I am not um, being biased because I'm talking to you right now, but your show is actually one of my very favorites. Oh. Um, and I, I truly mean that. And I've given this a lot of thought because um, Sacred Spaces, which Allison was the artist for, um, I bought a piece from it. I loved it so much because 
it was literally like stepping into an oasis. I mean, it was like you walked into the Arts and Heritage Center. And I don't know if, if people watching this are, are aware of your style of art being mostly botanical, mostly green and lively and almost mystified, though. I mean, there's like a layer to it that that um, walking into our space and the size of the pieces and everything, it literally felt like walking into into an oasis. Um, that's definitely one of my favorites for sure. You. Disclaimer, I did not know that was going to be <laughs> so I did not ask that question to get right. <laughs> Good disclaimer. Um, <laughs> the, another one was um, Respira Just Breathe. That was another like top one for me. Yeah. So um, I always have to talk about that one because that one was tied to um, both as an organization and for me personally, our first federal national endowment for the arts grant was tied to that one. And it was in, in fall of 2018 and Respira just breathe was in partnership with theater in the park, who is, um, uh, well, kind of my department too. Um, but is our theater company within the building. Um, and we put a call for entry out to artists specifically targeting, um, how to highlight diversity and, um, kind of accepting people for who they are and, and what that means and how that translates. It was a partnership with Theater in the Parks in the production of um, In the Heights, which highlights a lot of those same concepts. Um, and so we ended up selecting um, JT Daniels along with the JCDS Emerging Artists. And what was particularly amazing about this show that I enjoyed so much is... Um, so JT kind of spearheaded it so that the emerging artists could um, have the opportunity to express themselves um, directly on the walls. So this was our first wall mural installation. And um, for anyone who doesn't know, the JCDS emerging artists are um, working artists who work on site at the Arts and Heritage Center. And they are artists who have um, various developmental and intellectual disabilities at varying degrees. And they have absolutely become part of our Arts and Heritage Center family. We love them so much. So shout out to JCDS Emerging Artists. Um, but the coolest part was when they got to go on the wall, um, we did these like brick urban inspired designs that um, we're pulling from the In the Heights production, which takes place in urban um, city and um, in Washington Heights. And uh, the artists decided to do individual kind of like body outlines and then they decorate, they designed the insides of the bodies to kind of represent themselves. And they each have very different styles. In fact, I have a, an original George Utter behind me. Um, and they each did it to, the, to their own design and their own thinking. But I just, it, the coolest part with all of that that has always stuck out with me is they painted the walls during our regular open business hours. And we had, I kid you not, children and families pulling up seats to sit and watch these artists and ask them questions and talk to them about what they were doing, who they were, um, what does this mean? And, and it was just this really beautiful, um, kind of serendipitous thing because that, that was not necessarily the direction that I think I expected it to go. Um, and it went in this really beautiful poetic way. And it just, it, I cried when they, when I saw that I stood out in the comments, I'll never forget it. Cause I just, I started crying. I was like, this is just beautiful because it was just, there was this little three-year-old tyke sitting on the couch talking to, I think it was Brad at the time. Yeah. <laughs> that he was just asking him, like he was being, he was painting super Brad on the wall and he thought that was just the most amazing thing. And it was just, that was just the coolest thing ever. I mean, it just, I think about that show all the time. <laughs> yeah. That, and they did, they did two walls, right? Two different. Yeah. 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 So one wall was like graffitied with Respira. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then um, the other wall was a brick wall with kind of their silhouettes, designed silhouettes. Mm -hmm. And then um, the large, we have a large theater wall that's about 60 feet wide um, and roughly 28 feet tall. And they had done these really large, I don't remember the exact size. I think they were four by six canvases mm -hmm. to design. Each artist did a different one and design spelled out the word breathe, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, again, it was all tying back to connection between people and 
accepting people for who they are and that that that's that that's okay you know so it was it was it was the best <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. Um, wow <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> um you should hear me talk about this when I've got pictures of it pulled up. No, I'm just, I was like, just trying to think, like, do we have any, I mean, are they, do you guys put web uh, pictures of like past stuff on the website? Funny you say that. So, <laughs> um, I am in the process of building out a past exhibitions page Ooh. on our website. So I, one of my goals is to have that launched or hopefully done here within the next month or so like it's it's just gonna be a project so um it is technically live right now because it does have the resilience reflection rebuilding exhibit on it um but it just doesn't have anything before that so it will be live but it'll be fully fleshed out hopefully here in another month or so when i can add everything yeah that's awesome that'd be really cool to go back and see because I, I mean i've only been working there for I think this may will be my third year and even then i've seen so many i mean uh kathy kirkland's show all her colors yeah. um i can't even think of any other ones but it's just so many shows and there's annual shows and yeah, yeah it's awesome there's been so many well and the so the very first show because i'm gonna rant now um the very first show um was a show um called uh new new Be new beginnings about um how the arts and heritage center became the arts and heritage center and kind of that concept that it was something old turned to new and um so we had all these local artists there were about seven of them that all participated and it was a beautiful show when we first opened and then stemming from that Catherine kirkland who is a wonderful wonderful local artist um who creates just these beautifully detailed pieces um uh had a solo show stemming off of that um alec webb had a solo show there um i know i'm like blanking on all these other shows right now but there are just there's so many and i would love to continue to tell that story in whatever way we can and so i do know that um that hopefully i'll be able to get that that website rolling soon because it's just there's a lot to see it's yeah. really cool yeah that's awesome and the the whole person did yes the whole person their their expressions exhibit we hosted that um once and we also hosted the congressional art competition in partnership with uh sharice david's office that one was and so i mean it's just like there's so many mm -hmm. <laughs> um we usually host a homeschool show um and yeah i mean there's there's a lot and and the thing that i really love about our particular exhibition space and one of my goals from the get-go with that space was um really it's about community mm -hmm. and um kind of making the arts accessible and trying to communicate to our public about various important topics that aren't always talked about yeah. whether it's you know mental health uh racial inequalities um COVID-19 mm -hmm. um you know all these different things and and that that's just we have an opportunity to be that bridge for artists to to connect with the community in a different way and hopefully be a springboard to other shows and things like that so mm -hmm. um i do always like to emphasize too that one of the really cool parts about our exhibition space is all of it per the artist's um choice is typically available for sale we don't keep any of that like that all goes straight to supporting the artist and so anything that sells in our space goes to them which is very unique and doesn't happen a lot so um you know, I always urge to our public support local artists because it's just, it's important. And having, having real art and supporting local artists is just, it's important. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's so important. Um, speaking of community and bringing people together, can you talk about your kindness rock garden? Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing I do. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so we, we started, I think it would have been October. October, um, we have in front of the Arts and Heritage Center this really lovely kind, kindness rock garden called the kind stemming from the National Movement for the Kindness Rock Project. And it was actually brought to our attention by um, Shannon with the Overland Park Painted Rocks group. And so we kind of part partnered with her, partnered with them a little bit, and um, we now have this this wonderful garden in the front. So 
the cool part about this garden is that it is open and available and free to the public. They are these amazingly detailed rocks that have inspirational quotes, inspiring pictures, all sorts of things on them. And you can take one if you feel so inclined. The thing that we urge people to do is if you take one, we would appreciate you also bring a different one back or even take take some time and paint a few with, with friends and family and bring them back um, so that other people can experience that same kindness. So it's just intended to be this uplifting, positive thing during an otherwise dark time, which is really wonderful. Um, but there are some some blank rocks out there by the Kindness Rock Project um, garden up in the front so that that way, um, along with directions, so that that way, if someone's not too sure what to do, there is kind of a setup there that if you want to take a rock, take a picture of the directions, you can take it home and, and paint one yourself too. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, but it's also been beautifully received. I love seeing, you know, everyone's always, it just brings a smile. Yeah, yeah, they, there are some incredible rocks in there. I know. I, I know I've got one on my desk that has the Lorax on it. That is just like, it's so, it's so detailed. It's so cool. And it's just on this tiny rock. I mean, I know, it's just, I yeah. know there was one, um, I almost picked it up and I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't, but I kind of am sad that I didn't, but, um, it was one of Monet's water lily, like water lily paintings on the bridge. And it yes. was like perfect. Like it was like he had painted it on a rock. It was insane. And I think it's gone now, but I hope whoever has it like cherishes it forever because yeah. they are so cool. It, it is. It is. Well, and there's, it's a, it's a movement. There's so many rock groups locally. Um, I know Overland Park has one. I think Leewood has one. I want to say there's a Lenexa one, like there's a ton. And um, if anyone's interested, they should seek out those groups. I mean, it's really just a great positive energy, positive thing makes you smile. I mean, it's like, there's, it's just a wonderful thing. So yeah. yeah, we actually, I live in Olathe and it's not rocks, but it's um, wood, like painted paintings on wood. Um, so cool. my house is it, really close to one of, the, well, a part of the Indian Creek Trail. Mm -hmm. um, and in that part that I think it's like South Downs, the South Downs area, um, through that part of the trail on both sides in the trees, there are pieces of flat wood hanging everywhere, like everywhere that have paintings on them um, oh, that the community cool. is part of. And yeah, you can just put your paintings up there. I don't know if they encourage like the take one, leave one thing. I think it's more of like a outdoor gallery type. I don't know yeah. how to describe it, but it's so cool. Well, the thing that's so important about those things too, especially right now is it's like, okay, we have shifted to a society that is so heavy on social media. And I mean, I, I can't be in my house without having music or TV going just because that's, that's, I have to have that. And people are not connecting with each other in the same way that we have in decades past. And so I think that these movements that are happening are such a beautiful way to still find other ways to connect with people because all of that has only skyrocketed with COVID. So it's just a, it's a really great opportunity to just think, you know, I mean, some of these rocks may be that someone held on to it for a while and then decided to pass it off at the next garden. I mean, it's like how many people have been impacted by this Lorax rock that's sitting on my, my desk or the, the Monet one that you saw. It's like, it's just people need to connect in, in deeper ways than, than just through digital, um, digital things right now. I just, there are other ways to connect and I think that's a great opportunity to do so. Yeah, that's a really cool project. Um, well, I don't think I have any other questions. Um, my only other thing is, is there a way for the public to support the Arts and Heritage Center, the Fine Arts Department? Um, tell us what we can do. <laughs> That's an awesome question. So thank you. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that has always surprised me, because we've been open since June 2017, is there's still a lot of people who don't know we're here and what we are and what we're doing. So I think the biggest thing that we could use right now is just spread in word. I mean, it's such a cool building. There's, you know, the arts council office is out of there, which we create beautiful partnerships with fine arts is out of there. So there's visual arts, art studios, JCDS emerging artists have an art studio, a beautiful dance studio, black box theater, theater in the parks, the resident theater company, 
gorgeous event space that people can use for weddings and um, other events. I got married there. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) um, A a wonderful, beautiful, so well done Johnson County Museum that it's just, there's so much going on in this building. And I still think that we are um, fighting the good fight to get people to know about it. So Mm -hmm. I think just the biggest thing that I think our community can do is rally and be telling each other, um, Hey, go check out this place. It's so cool. (laughs) So yeah, I think just spreading word and like us on Facebook and Instagram and and whatever we can do just because I think that's the big thing for us right now. Yeah. Awesome. Easy enough. And you guys, they're doing a great job with COVID protocols and they clean everything multiple times a day. And honestly, I'm, like pleasantly surprised at how well that they're taking care of their building. Honestly, the COVID protocols that have been followed has been impeccable. And I'm not just saying that because I work there, but my family has been on basically a a quasi lockdown since all this, with the exception of me going to work and my husband going to work. We are not doing anything. We kept my six-year-old home to homeschool. Like we're doing nothing. We haven't been to a restaurant and I don't know since when, like, (laughs) Um, but I would trust my family going to the Arts and Heritage Center because I know from the inside and outside what they are doing. And it's, I mean, they're, they're really taking it seriously, which I very much appreciate, um, both as an employee and as a member of the community. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Well, is there anything else that you would like to say that we haven't talked about that we need Um, to? great question. I just, you know, I just want to thank you for having me, of course. And then I also, I have to send out a thank you to everybody who is part of my teaching artist crew, um, because we could not have gotten through all this COVID stuff without such an amazing group. I mean, it's like, you know, Marcy, you, Kelly, uh, Brooke, Danny, it's, I mean, it just, we have an amazing group of people that that I am so thankful to have on my team and be working with. And, um, I don't think that, that everyone gets thanked enough. So, um, so yeah, I just have to say that I love them. I love you all. <laughs> You're a great team. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm a little bit a part of it still, but you're still there, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do, they do great things. They do great things. So, well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your afternoon to come talk with me. Um, and if there's nothing else, I think we will sign off from there. Sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Bye.